everybody that's here tonight yes. in this Bible study. Praise and um, Praise. I'm glad you've come, I'm glad that you're here. Yes. And uh, I'm going to just start out. And uh, it may be that uh, the brethren around me might have a question or they might have a comment or something that might take us in another area. But um, I think the Lord wants us tonight to um, make it a very profitable night in the Word yes. and in His presence. Yes. And uh, I, Hallelujah. as I said, if you have a testimony now before I start or even while I'm teaching, you get it. If one of the brethren would like to make a comment, the elders of the church, they can. Um, I'm using um, I'm some thoughts from the Keys of the Kingdom, the book that I just uh, put out. And by the way, if you haven't gotten this little study guide of the Bible, it's helpful. It can be helpful. Only wish the print were a little larger. And the next time we have a reprint, we've had two prints now of this, and we're getting ready to have another reprint. I think we'll make the, the uh, print a little larger for you. But other than that, it's a very, it's a very compact book, and it's a book that uh, has many uh, good things in it that you can you can just get into and and uh, really get something from. It's a simplified book, and it's uh, taken mostly from the notes of my years of studying the Bible and the notes that I made. Uh, and some notes I copied from other men as I was coming up in the ministry and studying and uh, used some of their notes and many of mine that I uh, had from the Word. Uh, I'm, I'm looking, I'm going to go right now on page 76 uh, and uh, I have some comments here and we'll, we'll study from these comments. Um, and 115, which is a numerical number on page 76, I make the statement that the gospel of the kingdom of God came into existence on the day of Pentecost. And uh, I'd like to take two or three comments I make, and then we'll get into study. Uh, then in 116, a uh, numerical number of this comment, page 76, and um, by the way, Brother May here he has access to the books and also the other book, Capturing Life and um, Letting It Go. And I've never tried to make money off from the family of God. If you don't have the money to get these two books or get one of them, um, we'll, we'll help you get them. We want them out among the people. Uh, so see Brother May and if you can contribute, for the two books, it's um, uh, $10, isn't it? $10. Two books, and then one book is $6. But uh, if you don't have that money, uh, we're not going to keep you from getting those books in hand to study. Just see Brother May and tell him you like those two books, and uh, he'll get them for you. But in uh, 116, let me go back over 115 because I interrupted the thought. Uh, the gospel of the kingdom of God came into existence on the day of Pentecost. And then in 116, the stone taken out of the mountain means the bride, a small remnant out of the body of Christ. <coughs> That's scripture verse on that that you want is Daniel, the book of Daniel. And I think we'll go to Daniel tonight, uh, the second chapter and the 44th verse of Daniel. That's the prophecy. I believe of the stone being taken out of the mountain uh, without hands. And it's referring uh, to the bride of Christ, which we might want to discuss some tonight, uh, because religion in general doesn't teach the bride of Christ as we teach it here. If you're coming from a nominal church, uh, a Protestant uh, church, uh, you've heard the teaching on the Bride of Christ, and I don't think you've ever heard it except they taught you 
and I'm familiar with the doctrines of most of the Protestant churches, they taught you that the bride of Christ was the church, and the church was the bride. Well, we don't see that in the scriptures in our teaching here. We see that the church and the bride of Christ, those two terms in the scriptures, are two separate uh, things, entities. Uh, the bride is not the church, and the church is not the bride. The bride is, as I made this comment here in the Keys of the Kingdom, it's a small remnant out of the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church, and God is not going to accept the whole church as the bride, because the bride is a very chosen, special woman or church that is to be far above the church, just the church. The church has uh, flaws in it, has imperfections in it. The bride that marries Christ are the remnant, uh, remnant uh, people doesn't have imperfections or flaws. They are to be mature or perfect before Christ for him to marry them using the spiritual term marriage uh, as his bride. So we'll get in there. Daniel perhaps in a moment, and then we'll go uh, to Acts 2 on this comment, the gospel of the kingdom of God came into existence on the day of Pentecost. So before we get any further in comments, lest we confuse, let's just do that. Let's go to uh, uh, the book of Acts and the scriptures in the um, second chapter, Acts 2, and uh, we'll see this comment we made, the gospel of the kingdom of God came into existence on the day of Pentecost. What did happen on the day of Pentecost, you have to ask yourself. Why was it the day of Pentecost in such a special measure before God, and what significance should we attach to the day of Pentecost? Uh, Pentecost means 50. Uh, the term 50, the numerical count 50. Uh, the day of Pentecost was the 50th day after the Passover. Christ, of course, was the Passover, and that was the day that Christ was offered on the cross as a perfect sacrifice, uh, as the Lamb of God, spotless before God, the spotless, pure Lamb offered for sacrifice for my sins and yours. And then there was 50 days after that until the day of Pentecost. And this was taken from the Old Testament in the book of Exodus. In the, in the Old Testament book, the book of Exodus, Exodus 12 and 13 and 14, where the Passover lamb uh, was offered for the house of Israel to keep the firstborn child from dying in that house when God came down upon Egypt with the plagues because they would not let Israel go out of captivity. And so God said, all right, if you won't let Israel go, you won't let my people go. Moses, you tell every Israelite, every household of Israelite to take a lamb <laughs> on the 10th day of Abed Nisan, which is April, um, uh, March, April, uh, April, May, uh, in the Jewish calendar. They combine the two months, April and May. And uh, Abed Nisan, that's the Hebrew term for it. And you take a lamb, and you take that lamb out of the first of the flock, and that lamb has to be spotless. It cannot have any blemish in the ear, on the hoof, in the, in the in the wool. It must be a beautiful lamb. It has to be spotless, without any blemish. And in the teeth, everything about that lamb had to be perfect. And you take and tell every Israelite, the head of the house, to take that lamb and put it in a pen on the 10th day of uh, April, May. And you uh, 
keep that, tell them to keep that lamb, 